please read it. Search your name in the other person's messages. Do we have to do this? I'll do it, I'll do it. If you, you don't have to do anything. Damn, look at she's she deleting Sorry, messages. Wait, no. you deleting stuff? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Diane. I'm 21. I'm currently a fourth year student at UCLA. My name is Justin Fajardo. I'm 21 years old and I'm currently a senior at USC. What would you say is like a trigger on a date? I think if they like can't talk to me, I don't mind carrying a conversation, but I feel like when I have to do like 90% of the work, that's a sign that we aren't compatible. I feel like it's hard for me to be vulnerable with people sometimes, and with Justin, I feel like I can tell him anything. I met Justin five years ago at a conference for UC Berkeley during high school. At the end of the conference, we had little envelopes and I found a note in it. It said like, hi, it was nice to meet you, and a phone number and I basically texted the phone number on a limb. So I basically slid in DMs, but physically. <laughs> we just started texting a lot and FaceTiming a lot and just kind of hit it off. We dated for about six months and then right after that, things kind of fell apart. So I was still immature, had a lot to learn, and then the way it ended was, it was really messy. I really, really hurt her. We rekindled like my first year of college and then we also rekindled this year, which is my fourth year of college. I called her, <laughs> is it me? Can I just not get over my first love? I got out of a relationship a few months ago. Right after that is when me and Justin started talking again. I mean, it's really fun. We went on multiple dates. We're going to date soon. So yeah, I think situationship is the best way to put it. <laughs> Where we stand right now is just friends, but just friends that feel emotionally connected and physically attracted to one another. And I was like, okay, well, that doesn't sound like just friends, but yeah, I can do that. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. I don't, I just feel nervous. <laughs> yeah, I just feel nervous. Hello? Hey. Oh, you hug? Oh, all right. <laughs> what should we drink? So there's tea, but then I do see a lot of other options. This is IPA beer. I like tequila. <laughs> Big shots. <laughs> Hopefully this tastes good. Well. I feel like I'm gonna make a face when I drink alcohol this. Alcohol is alcohol, right? Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Ooh, we getting loose now. Cheers. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it's a perception box question. Okay. What is something you regret that you failed to do or say in a past relationship? My most recent relationship and what I regret or failed to do was stand up for myself. I just destroyed myself, my whole identity. I cut off all my friends because I was told that for whatever reasons, they weren't really my friends. They didn't really care about me. I was told, don't talk about your interests. Don't talk about this stuff because I don't care. I let it drag on because if I did that, then the relationship would continue and my partner would be happy and she'd be happy. And it happened for a reason. And it made me who I am now and it formed boundaries for myself and how to stand up for myself and knowing who I was and forming my identity. So I've done a lot of work to figure out what's real and what's not. So yeah, how about um, you? Maintain my friendships while I was in a relationship. I prioritized my significant other a lot. I don't know, I was just like tunnel vision on like my partner at the time. And then it wasn't until like I was outside of the relationship that I realized that like I'm not as close to my friends anymore. But it's a lot better now, so I love all my friends. Yeah. So it's D for two. What's the worst thing someone could say about you? You, okay, go. I'll go. you go, yeah. I think if someone were to tell me that like I don't know, like you've had it so easy or that like you didn't work hard or especially in college because like I go to UCLA, like a lot of people come from like very affluent backgrounds, privileged backgrounds and like I didn't grow up that way, like immigrant household. And so when people say that, it's like, yeah. you don't know me, but 
the worst thing someone could say about me is like, why do I care so much? Like, that's something that friends have often told me in an effort to be like, you know, just let it go. Like, why does it bother you so much? Being in touch with my emotions and emotional intelligence is something I take a lot of pride in. And someone saying like, why do you care so much? Like, just let it go and move on. While it is objectively good advice, it just pushes them away from me because I realize that they don't really know who I am. Like, it's core to me to care and to be thoughtful. I didn't know that. Your turn. Okay, challenge card. First oh challenge. Oh boy. <laughs> oh god. What? It says FaceTime the other person's mom. Oh, it's gotta be mine then because. Oh yeah, because. Uh... Okay. All right. On my phone. I can't stop laughing. It's so funny. Oh, she might not pick up. Don't pick up, mom. She knows. She knows. <laughs> okay, let me take a deep breath. Hi, mom. It's a, okay. Hi, Miss Eats. <laughs> Basically, we got a challenge card and it says to FaceTime the other person's mom. So that's why. Sorry, mom, that's love why you. Justin had, Sorry. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. Okay, I love you. Are you able to see me right now? No, no, no. the cameras can't see you, mom. They can't see you, it's okay. I'm sick in bed. I know, I know, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry. Okay, I love you. Oh. Love you, bye. <laughs> Oh, great. Crazy challenge card. Wild. Insane. When was the last time that you really cried? Okay, for me at least. It was on the FaceTime that we had a few weeks ago, and we had talked about like, oh, what are we? What should we be? And I got really emotional. I think mostly I had decided that we should have ended things. I don't know, I felt really sad that I decided to do that. And I also felt like I didn't express myself in the best way possible. But yeah, I think as I was just like talking about it and like telling you like how I felt about the situation, like, um, and like you, I think that's when I got emotional and started crying. <sighs> Last time I really cried, yeah, it was that same situation. It was. It was the drive back. We hung out all day, and then I was about to, you walked me to my car, and then you got in the car, and you're like, I got something to tell you. And we, we all know what happened, but I felt like I had no say in it. I felt very blindsided and let on at the time, and that, that's how I feel that it was, but I forgive you now, of course. I was just trying to be stoic, and then as soon as you walked back and I saw you got back into your apartment safely, I just drove off, and yeah, I instantly I called my mom, and just, I couldn't, I couldn't even get the words out. She said, what's wrong? And I just couldn't even tell her. I just started crying and, yeah. Do you want me to talk about it? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking with you, okay. She, she was coming to town, I think, to see friends or something into LA. Basically, she was gonna have the whole day with her friends and then the plans were I was gonna pick her up at the beach and then she was gonna stay the night at my place. We are gonna hang out or, whatever, <laughs> and then the next morning, then I would drive her back to her friends. That was the plan. Uh, instead, what happened was, I, I didn't feel well, that's yeah. all. I was just upset because there were decisions that I felt Diane could have made that I was like, why didn't you part, like you knew you were gonna hang out with me and then I felt disrespected. I had driven all the way out to go pick you up at the beach and then when I get there, I felt like I was being just like handed a burden in a sense, which is, I hate saying it that way, but that's how I felt in the moment. One of your friends told me like, oh, like, it's okay. Like if you can't take care of her, we can take care of her. And looking back, it was kind of one of those like comments of like of just being cordial and polite, but assuming I would say, no, 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 I got it. And I said, I went, yeah, I, I wasn't ready to take care of her. No, you take care of her. And I left and I left in a very angry manner. I scared you really badly, which I super regret. And you know that I told you that was horrible of me and I would never leave you like that again. So. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a challenge card. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. Please read it. Search your name in the other person's messages. Yeah. Do we have to do this? I'll do it, I'll do it. If you, if you don't have to do anything, for sure. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, you guys get five more seconds. Okay. Damn, look at right. she, she deleting Sorry, messages. Wait, no. you deleting stuff?
No, no. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I guess I don't. I think you know what I was going to say. What were you going to say? So how much do you guys talk? Like here and there. You said it was just him reaching out. I guess kind of both. Are you sure you don't want to take it like that? How much you guys talk? Do you want him back? Or do we want to take it either? I'm good to go forward with the questions. Do you want to go forward with questions? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Is it my card or your card? It's mine. Okay. okay. Uh, perception box question. What is your most consistent and greatest fear? Um, I think coming from like an immigrant, low income household, like money was such like a big topic in our house. And especially since I'm graduating, I'm thinking about like, what am I gonna do after graduation? Like I need to have a job. And so I think my most consistent and greatest fear is like not having enough money to like keep myself up on my own feet without having to like rely on other people. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that f the question of what greatest fear, I was going to touch on it anyways, but now no better way to talk about it. Um, yeah, fear of not having control over things, being abandoned, and I being played. And well, I'm saying this because I care about you, about us, about my own feelings and emotions. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm really hurt, Diane. Thought I had a grasp on things, and I really didn't. The term situationship, it doesn't always have like clear boundaries because it's not like a fully committed relationship. Being exclusive or like not being exclusive until it's stated. And that's what it's like for me. Like if it's not stated, then I'm gonna assume that it's not exclusive. And the text that I had read is saying me and Justin are not a situation ship, so. It's 
So then what do you think this is then? Like, we're not like, there's like no full commitment. And so I didn't think it was like something we you know, had to discuss or I don't know. You said you needed more ambiguity, a little bit more space. I respected that. Well, if we're gonna go with what we had said out loud was, oh, we're just friends. I feel like you would tell a friend what's going on. At times, I feel like I do have those feelings for you. And then at times, I feel like I don't. I think I haven't felt that spark the past few days. Um, yeah, I could tell. I knew you were distant. And, and so like right now, that's where I'm at. Like I feel like we have really good conversation and it's like fun, but I don't, that's all I know right now. Okay. And at times like I do want to take a step forward and at times I don't, but it's too like uncertain to say. I mean, we rewind back to the whole, you know, you kind of blindsided me with the just friends and then, okay, I'll get over it, I'll move on. And then three days go by and suddenly, hey, I need to talk to you. There's some things I left unsaid I need to tell you. Okay, and she needs to tell me this because, right, to give me the reasons that I deserve. And then I hop on the phone call and it's not that at all. It's, I said everything, I regret the way I said things. I wasn't trying to lead you on. I feel emotionally connected to you. I feel physically attracted to you, but you know, things went too fast. I was overwhelmed. All very valid things, of course, yes. And then we agreed to very like, clear, like, hey, just friends. And I remember I took a little bit of a step back to see where your energy was and you were initiating a lot, you know, wanting to hang out. We hung out as friends, it was great. Although with a lack of clear boundaries, it always felt ambiguous and I was trying to be okay with it. And it's not a label, it's not like, I, oh, I want boyfriend, girlfriend, I want clarity. And this whole just friends thing, no flirting, no intimacy, was pretty clear for a while until it wasn't. And you spend the night in one other's place and and the way we've been, and now the past week where we, you know, we bend the rules a little bit. And, but I, I felt like we, okay, we're moving towards stage where we need some little more clarity. And you don't bring up Valentine's Day without <laughs> any intentions, right? <laughs> Nor do I think friends hang out one-on-one -on -one like that. Um, like, Sorry, guys. The fact that I got out of a relationship not too long ago. I think I feel really confused. Yeah, like I know it hurt him a lot. Like I didn't know this was gonna happen or like I didn't know he was gonna react that way. Um, and so I think I feel surprised, confused. Um, if it wasn't stated that it wasn't exclusive, like it's not exclusive. I just want it to be validated. I mean, it's still fresh, but still taking a breather and taking perspective, taking context, trying to see it in the way a friend would see it. Never had clear boundaries. It was just friends. We never used the term situationship anyways, actually, until recently. And so, and even then it felt more like a joke. It's easier said than done. When a friend is in a situationship, it's easy to remind them, hey, like, you can see other people too, but then when you're the other, per when you're the person involved in it, Oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's real hard. And so I guess that was the raw emotion there you saw. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't being as considerate of his feelings as I thought I was. Even though it was a hard conversation to have, I think it was necessary and that without this, like, I think that conversation wouldn't have came. And regardless of the outcome, like, yeah, I'm really grateful that we had talked about what we talked about, what happened. I think right now it's just really bad timing. Trying to figure out her feelings, just out of a fresh relationship. I mean, that's so hard. It's something I've been concerned about this entire time. What I do know is a lot more questions, a lot more things need to talk out, of course, in private. What you did technically isn't wrong. It's more the fact that you lied to me that feels wrong. I should be strong, and with anyone else I would be, but then with her, for lack of better terms, she kind of just breaks those, down those walls in a way, and I, I will tend to concede, and I know that. So 
of course I'm gonna hear her out, hear her side of things, but I, if they don't match, that's where I have to remind myself that then it's okay to let go, but I don't even want to think about that, so. We didn't get to the question of my biggest fear, it's lack of control, which is life. You don't get to control everything, but it's a fear of mine, and so you gotta let go sometimes. So moving forward, yeah, you just gotta be super clear with, with that and know the expectations each person has.